Well, hi friends. I'm your old pal, Papa Dale, once again. Now, I'm a retired pastor, teacher, theologian, and professor with over 50 years of service to the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Dale Warren. Professionally, I'm known in my writings and teachings as D.A. Warren. But my friends just call me Papa Dale. You can call me Papa Dale. <laughs> We're friends. You can see the details of my testimony, family, education, and ministry experience on other videos on this playlist. But for now, let's get right into the topic for today, which is wisdom literature. Now, this is lecture number 12 of the JHI, the Jan Hus Institute of uh, Biblical Studies. And this is the Bachelor of Arts degree course in biblical literature. So here we go. This particular study is in the biblical literature known as wisdom literature. Biblical wisdom literature is a distinct genre in the Bible that focuses on practical and philosophical questions about life, morality, the nature of God, and how to live rightly in the world. This genre of literature often explores themes such as the nature of wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and the proper conduct for living a life pleasing to God. It is concerned with understanding the human condition, the nature of good and evil, and how to attain a fulfilling and righteous life. Wisdom literature is found both in the Old and New Testaments with a significant concentration in the Old Testament. Well, let's look at the nature of wisdom. Wisdom is portrayed as a valuable and desirable quality that leads to a successful and moral life. It is often personified and described as a divine gift that brings insight and understanding. What are some characteristics of biblical wisdom literature? Well, there's the practical focus. Wisdom literature offers practical advice for everyday living, including themes like work, relationship, integrity, and speech. It emphasizes living wisely in accordance with God's order. Then there's philosophical uh, reflection. Philosophical reflection, it reflects deeply on existential questions such as the meaning of life, the nature of suffering, the problem of evil, and the reality of death. Observational. Wisdom texts are based on observations of life and the natural world. They often present insights derived from personal experiences or general truths about human nature. Then we have the poetic and proverbial style. Much of wisdom literature is written in poetic form, employing parallelism, which is the balance of ideas in lines, and proverbs, short, pithy sayings that convey wisdom. There are universal themes. Wisdom literature addresses timeless and universal issues such as justice, suffering, morality, and the pursuit of happiness, making it relevant across cultures and ages. An important theme is the fear of the Lord. This is a key concept in that wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord, Proverbs chapter 1, meaning a deep respect and reverence for God. Wisdom is not just intellectual knowledge but living in a way that honors God. Well, let's look at some of the major books of biblical wisdom literature. Book of Proverbs. The focus of Proverbs is practical wisdom for daily living. The content of Proverbs is a collection of short, wise sayings attributed mainly to, Mo to Solomon that provide moral and ethical instructions. It emphasizes virtues, like diligence, honesty, humility, and self-control, while warning against 
folly, laziness, and dishonesty. Key themes in the Proverbs include the fear of the Lord as the foundation of wisdom. Now remember, the fear of the Lord doesn't mean Ooh, fear of the Lord, although that could be part of it. But the fear of the Lord generally means reverence, respect, and that sort of thing. Uh, key themes. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Also, the importance of hard work, wise speech, and integrity. And the contrast between wisdom and foolishness, righteousness, and wickedness. The book of Job. In the book of Job, the focus is the problem of suffering and the justice of God. Oh, that's, that's an important one in human history, trying to sort that out. The content in the book of Job, it's a, it's a poetic dialogue about the nature of suffering and divine justice. The book of Job tells the story of a person, Job, a righteous man, who suffers greatly and questions the reasons for his suffering. Job tells the story of a righteous man who suffers great losses despite his integrity. The book explores profound questions about the nature of suffering, the justice of God, and human understanding. Job's friends in this book argue that his suffering must be the result of sin. But Job maintains his innocence. The book culminates with God speaking from a whirlwind, emphasizing his sovereign wisdom. Key themes in the book of Job, suffering and its relationship to righteousness, divine justice, and the mystery of God's ways. Also, the limits of human understanding of God's ways, the reality of innocent suffering, the sovereignty and wisdom of God over all creation, the challenge of maintaining faith in the face of suffering. The book of Ecclesiastes. The focus there is the search for meaning in life. The content traditionally attributed to Solomon, Ecclesiastes reflects on the meaning and purpose of life. The author known as the teacher or the preacher expresses disillusionment with worldly pursuits like wealth, pleasure, and work, declaring that all is vanity without God, Ecclesiastes 1-2. He explores the fleeting nature of life and the certainty of death, ultimately, ultimately concluding that the best course of action is to fear God and to keep his commandments. Key themes, the transient nature of life, the pursuit of meaning, the limits of human freedom, and the importance of fearing God, reverencing God. The futility of material pursuits and human efforts, the vanity of vanities, the inevitability of death, the pursuit of joy in the simple things of life. The ultimate purpose of life is found in revering God and obeying His commandments. Another book, The Song of Solomon, also known as The Song of Songs. The focus here is the beauty of love and marriage. The content is, The Song of Solomon is a poetic dialogue between a bride, the Shulamite woman, and her groom, often interpreted as Solomon himself. Celebrating the joys of love and desire between the two of them and marital intimacy, it is an allegory of love, often interpreted both literally as a celebration of romantic love and allegorically as representing the love between God and Israel, or Christ and the Church, or Yahweh and the individual. Key themes, the beauty and sanctity of love, the mutuality and intimacy of marital relationships, and the powerful and unquenchable nature of love. 
the book of uh, Psalms, the focus in the book of Psalms, wisdom and worship through poetic prayers. So what's the content? Well, not strictly a wisdom book. The Psalm con Psalms contain elements of wisdom literature, lots of them. Within Psalms that reflect on the righteous path versus the path of the wicked. The examples are Psalm 1, Psalm 37. The Psalms also explore themes of trust in God, justice, and the fleeting nature of human life. Key themes, trusting in God's wisdom and justice, the contrast between the way of the righteous and the way of the wicked, praise for God's sovereignty over creation and history, key themes in biblical wisdom literature. The fear of the Lord is one of these key themes. Reverence for God is foundational to wisdom. This concept is central in Proverbs, but also appears in Job and Ecclesiastes. Wisdom is not just knowledge, but living rightly. <coughs> Pardon me. But living rightly before God. Proverbs 9 verse 10. The righteous and the wicked. A common theme is the contrast between the righteous who live in accordance with God's ways and the wicked who reject God's order. The righteous are often described as flourishing, while the wicked are ultimately doomed. Proverbs 11, 5 and 6. Well, We've got to deal with the problem of suffering. Job wrestles with the issue of why the righteous suffer, challenging the simplistic view that good things always happen to good people and bad things to bad people. <laughs> Not true. Job shows that suffering is sometimes beyond human understanding and a part of God's greater plan. Remember I said at one point that top of mind for God is our eternal well-being, not our temporal. Sometimes, oftentimes, the two intertwine, but the primary focus in God's mind is always our eternal flourishing. Well, here's another theme. The meaning of life. Is that what we're dealing with? Yes, key themes. The meaning of life. Ecclesiastes engages deeply with the question of life's meaning, especially in light of death. It questions whether human pursuits, work, pleasure, or even wisdom have any lasting significance apart from God. Another key theme is human limitations. Wisdom literature often emphasizes human limitations in understanding God's ways. Job, Ecclesiastes, and Psalm, Psalms point out that human knowledge is finite and God's wisdom is beyond comprehension. Boy, God really reveals that in Job, 38, in Job chapters 38 and 42. He is so much higher than we are. Our, we have no ability to understand him at all, except once in a while he gives us some glimpses. <laughs> so let's look at justice and retribution. Proverbs often suggests a system of moral retribution, where good behavior leads to blessing and evil behavior leads to punishment. However, Job and Ecclesiastes complement this view showing that life doesn't always follow this pattern and God's justice operates on a higher level, but, jo but God's justice is always accomplished. Contentment and Simplicity Ecclesiastes concludes that contentment in life comes not from striving after wealth or status, but from enjoying simple pleasures. Eating, drinking, taking pleasure in one's work, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 24, chapter 3, 12 through 13. The power of words. 
Proverbs particularly emphasizes the importance of wise speech, warning about the dangers of gossip, lying, and rash words, while extolling the value of truth, kindness, and discretion. See Proverbs 12, verse 18, and Proverbs 15, through uh, verse 1. What is the role of biblical wisdom? Well, let's look at that. You have divine versus human wisdom. Wisdom literature acknowledges both divine wisdom, which is beyond human understanding, and human wisdom, the practical knowledge we can gain through observation and experience. However, it often stresses that human wisdom should be grounded in a reverence for God. Let's look at a guide for living. These books serve as practical guides for living a godly and successful life, offering insights into personal integrity, relationships, and community behavior. What about wisdom literature in the New Testament? Is there such a thing? Yeah, there is. Well, the New Testament does not have books specifically designated as wisdom literature. Several passages reflect wisdom themes. What about the teachings of Jesus? Jesus often taught in a manner similar to wisdom teachers, offering practical advice on how to live. For example, the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 through 7. His parables also function as wisdom literature, providing insight into the nature of God's kingdom and human relationships. The Epistle of James. James is often considered part of the New Testament's wisdom tradition because of its practical focus on living out one's faith with an emphasis on taming the tongue, showing impartiality, and living wisely. See James chapter 1 verse 5, chapter 13 verses 13 through 18. In conclusion, biblical wisdom literature offers timeless insights into how to live a life pleasing to God and how to navigate the complexities of human existence. Its rich, poetic, and philosophical depth provides guidance on how to live wisely, respond to suffering, and understand life in light of God's greater plan. It continues to challenge and inspire readers to seek wisdom that honors God and brings peace and fulfillment. This has been your old pal, Papa Dale, and this is the year 2024. If you have comments, questions, or prayer requests, you can leave them below, and if I can get to them, I will. Until the next lecture, I wish you and pray for you that you will be well and be blessed. <laughs>